Let's start by discussing the loss functions for regression problems, problems in which we have continuous values as our output. Now, all the available loss functions in Keras are available at this link. So if you simply search for Keras and loss functions, then you'll get to them. Um, here are some of the commonly used loss functions for regression problems. Mean squared error, mean absolute error, mean squared logarithmic error, log cost, and Huber loss. There are other possible loss functions as well. And the plot here actually shows the comparison of these loss functions. In this axis, what we have is the difference between your true label y minus your prediction. So this absolute value is in our x-axis. So if we consider absolute value, only one portion of the graph is relevant. But if we re remove the absolute value, both sides of the graph become um, relevant to look. So here, absolute loss, so this loss, absolute loss, which corresponds to the black line here, means that whatever the difference is, the loss becomes the same. So this is a linear line, and that's why the loss is equal to whatever the difference is. Similarly, the red line corresponds to the square loss, and we can see that higher the loss, higher, um, higher the difference between y, pred, um, y and pred, the bigger the loss becomes. So this is a concave function. So overall, you see that the bigger the difference, um, much higher the loss actually becomes. And then we have log cost, which in a way smooths that out. And then we also have a Huber loss. So here in this picture, we have Huber loss with two parameters. And um, in the picture over here on the left, actually we have Huber loss with various parameters. Hoover loss overall is a dynamic loss function in which we can control how flat or how curved upward facing we want the loss um, function to be. So if we, we can, based on the this parameter for the Hoover loss, we can control whether the loss should be very sensitive for larger values, right? For larger values, this is actually not very sensitive, but this one is very sensitive how sensitive we want our loss calculation to be compared to um, the, the difference between true and prediction. Now, choosing a loss function for regression can be very tricky. And uh, even for one of these, even for this reason, actually, many people don't even choose to um, solve regression problems. They rather convert the regression problem into a classification problem and solve it. The most common way to evaluate or like, you know, the easiest or simplest way of evaluating a regression model is using a plot like this, where in x-axis you have true values and in y-axis you have predicted values and then we look at the comparison. So each dot here in the plot, each dot represents a, each dot is a data point, is a data point, data point. And uh, say for example, if we focus on this data point right here, we can see that the true value for this data point was around 6.5, but the predicted value for this data point was 3.5. So clearly, the predicted value is lower than the actual true value. Now let's look at another data point. Say I pick this data point right here. Then for this data point, we can see that the true value is around 4.5, 4.5. And then the predicted value is also around 4.5. So overall, you can see that all the data points that are closer to the diagonal, closer to diagonal, are correct predictions. And all those that are away from the diagonal are incorrect predictions. Incorrect predictions. So this plot really helps to evaluate or assess assess how a regression model is doing, how a regression model 
model is doing. So we can, we can even see for my larger values, which is the reason over here, right? For my larger, larger values, how the predictions are doing, for a smaller values, how the predictions are doing, and so on. For example, in this plot, we can clearly see that the model is doing pretty good. So model is doing, doing good for smaller values, smaller, smaller values. So when the true values are small, then the model actually predicts quite good. But as, as the number of the, the value of the true measure or the true quantity increases, the model starts to perform poorly because we see that uh, when, when the values of true are higher, then the um, dots start, start going away from the diagonal. Now let's look at more plots. So here's first example plot. So this is the first one that we were looking at. Here's another example plot, and here's another example plot. So these three plots represent maybe predictions from model one. So this is model one. Here's predictions from model two, and here's predictions from model three. So these three plot above show three different regression models. Model two, model one, and model three. Clearly, these three models are making very different predictions. The question is, which models are bad out of these and what mistakes are they making? The things to look at is what loss functions are prone to which kinds of mistake and how will you change, how will this change when the numbers are less than one? So let's try to answer these one by one. Which of these models are bad? So clearly the third model here, this one, is a really good model because we see that most of the values are in the diagonal, very close to the diagonal. So these are really good predictions. Whereas this model right here, model number three is, oh, sorry, model number two is actually of course, it's a bad model because uh, many of the points are away from the diagonal. But we can also see a pattern here. Most of the values or all the values are below the diagonal. What this means is our model always likes to predict smaller values. Likes to predict smaller values. Smaller values. For example, if the true is, let's say, 8.5, then the model actually predicts 4.5 and so on. So all of these predictions that we see in the lower diagonal are actually less than the corresponding true. And uh, these are things that, um, like, you know, based on the loss function we choose, our model may focus on. For example, in this case, in the model one, we can see that the loss function is behaving in such a way that it's trying to correctly predict the lower part of this um, error plot, this part of the plot. So the loss function is focusing on smaller values, smaller values. And um, whereas here in, your, in our third model, lo the loss function is focusing focusing on all values, focusing on all values. Now we have to remember that um, the, the way loss is calculated is, say for example, my loss is an absolute loss, absolute loss such that the difference is y minus p. So this is a prediction minus the correct value. So this is my loss. Let's say this is the loss that I'm working with. Then Obviously, this loss becomes higher for higher values of y and p. So if my y is very high and if my p is very high, then it's very likely that the loss will also will be high, which means a function like this, y minus p, will naturally focus on this reason, trying to get this part more correct than the lower part of this error map. Now remember, when we have loss functions like um, mean squared error, mean squared error, 
the squares of numbers less than one um, is is uh, calculated differently. So say, for example, if I have numbers like one and five, then if I say, for example, I have a number, say five, then the square of five will be 25. But if I have a number, let's say 0. 0.5, then the square of 0. 0.5 is actually 0. 0.25. So even mean squared error can behave differently in this region where your values are actually less than one. So we have to be very careful about choosing a loss function. So the choice of loss function usually depends on the domain need. Do we want the model to focus on the entire range equally or first last part of the range? So when we are solving a regression problem, the question at hand is where do we want to focus? Do we want to predict the smaller values more correctly or larger values more correctly? And based on our need, we want to design the loss function accordingly because we may not be able to design a loss function that equally focuses on the entire range of our um, output variable.